It's easy to say in Jiu-Jitsu, the belts don't matter, especially when you have all of them. I'm guilty of it, as well as many others. But what if we're all wrong? Remember when you started Jiu-Jitsu and you thought the belts were the most important thing ever, that a black belt would somehow be a total slayer on the mats? Maybe it still is that way. To test it, I rolled with every other belt for this one video, back to back, only doing one game plan for everybody. I'm gonna see if my black belt somehow makes me a mystical fighter or if belts are just a sham. We're here at the first round going up against a white belt and my game plan for everybody is to take them down, pass the guard, get to mount, and then submit them. And boy, what a start this takedown was. <laughs> I didn't plan that one too well because I didn't think he pulled me down while I had the underhook, so I lost some brain cells for it. But Craig Jones says that autism helps out jiu-jitsu, so I may have just gotten a boost in my game. At the cost of my own IQ, I'm going to count that as a takedown, and I'm going to count this as a guard pass as I quick shimmy my leg over into side control, then I move to knee mount and go over into full mount right away. He tries to drive my manly hips away, but I've got a little bit too much weight on him, and I'm leaning forward. By posting my hands on the mat, I've got some easy pickings on how I want to keep him down. But to show mercy, I bring my leg over his stomach to hit knee mount on the opposite side, and he spins, giving me a free entry onto the Kimura. I'm trying to work out of my comfort zone, so I refuse to do any guillotines today, and I gotta work some new submissions. The Kimura is a great one because it offers masterful control the entire time you do it, and everyone taps when your nuts are in their face. As I do this experiment with every other belt, I think it's pretty obvious, having a black belt and lots of years on the mats definitely counts. I'm able to get him to with a trip to bring him down to the mat and start working the same game plan, but make no mistake, this white belt's doing a great job. The other thing you're going to see constantly from me in all my videos going forward is my passing game is improving. I'm using heavy pressure passing, working body locks, and tight waist, trying to get them to break before I even hit the submission. If you really want to break someone's spirit, use this position before you get to full mount. By locking up a triangle over the legs, it puts on some real knee bar pressure before you even take mount and start applying real body weight to them. I learned this from Dagestani wrestlers and he hates the pressure, so he looks for an easy way out by giving me his arm and he falls right into an head and arm trap. I keep mount while falling off to the side and get the tap. Alright, so the belt clearly matters between white and black belt, but how about with a blue belt? This round starts off with a little bit more spice as he shoots in on me, hoping to bring me down with a single leg. But I've been really into watching J Floto Judo lately, so I want to do a lot more takedowns. And that includes shooting my own high C after he fails his shot. Remember how I said I'm doing a lot of pressure passing? That counts here too. Once I've finished that takedown, I'm looking to keep control over his hips and I'm diving in for a cross face with my left arm, but he's framing against it trying to prevent me from getting there. But I notice a hole in his defense. His half guard isn't very strong, so I bring my head to the opposite side and I'm driving forward with tons of pressure. I use my shins like a butterfly guard, but from top. I'm constantly spreading his legs out, which allows me to pass into mount. But I'm going to switch it up on him by introducing a little bit of style. I step over the head and I look for a reverse Kimura grip. No, this isn't some black belt magic, I just want to keep control over his arm as I transition into the next attack. The real interesting thing here is he'd rather be put in the grave still hanging onto my foot. And because of that, I'm happy to help him get there. I'm not one for foot fetishes myself, so I bring my arm in to create a cross face and break my leg free. And once my leg is free, he's in for the time of his life, as I'm sprawling out on the neck, a feeling that nobody wishes on the worst enemy. Without giving you guys too much of a booty shot, I then transition by jumping over the guard, going right into the same spots we saw with the white belt where I can stuff the head, and I transition into the Kimura. He tries to grab his own leg, but alas, I yank it out and get the tap. That first Kimura wasn't enough for him, however, so he goes in for another shot, trying to get to the single leg, and it's true that I said I wouldn't be guillotining anybody, but that doesn't mean I won't use it to help me sweep. I throw him over into mount, then let go immediately not to break the challenge. Now I've already shown mercy by going to the guillotine and not finishing it, so let's kick it up a notch. As he begins to push against my legs, I'm going to go to the same position we saw before, which is starting to be a problem for everybody. I bring my ass over his head and sit on him. This spot is so good because it destroys his spine and prevents him from turning. I lock up another Kimura, rip it out, and get an easy tap. So far it's not looking too good and the black belt means a lot, but the purple belt's going to make it a lot more challenging. Because the second that we tie up, he shoots a single leg and he's in on it. Because he's lower to the ground, he's trying to cut the angle by moving out to the side versus driving me forward. I can't get to the guillotine from here to help me sweep him over, but I can get to something else. And that's none other than the Kimura grip. I'm driving my hip into his head to keep him down, then when I can connect my hands, I can fall backwards. Using the Kimura trap on both the white belt and the blue belt, I'm applying it to the purple belt as well. Bring my butt over the head, get a Kimura, and another easy tap. 
After that Kimura submission, he's looking for another takedown on me. And if you want to have better takedowns, make sure to go to xmarshall.com with promo code TYLER10. You can get some great looking gear so you're not wearing a t-shirt with tons of brands out there like I am and you can look stylish on the mats. They're constantly coming out with new designs and they sponsor so many athletes in the community. By purchasing gear from them, you're not only helping me and other YouTubers, but others in the community such as young athletes looking to grow in the sport. So make sure you get some gear with promo code TYLER10, then continue to watch the video as I finish off another man. I'm using the head and arm choke and I'm pressing hard into him. I put him in this submission for so long that I can tell he just wants to tap, but I'm not going to let that happen until everything's locked up perfectly. I squeeze and squeeze and readjust his arm, and once everything's tight, I lock up and I get the finish. Now this man's been attempting all the takedowns and it's my turn to get in the action. I set up a little bit of footwork and handwork until I'm able to find a good angle for a blast single. But we go into the wall, but I'm not going to let the wall take my glory. So I reset and I'm going to go for another one. Hand fighting is the key way to open up your opponent, but so is having good head positioning. He tries to shuck my arm, but I'm still coming forward, which gives me an easy body lock, which then I use to trip him and bring him down to the mat. Breaking down your opponent requires that you control their hips, and landing from a body lock gives me just that opening that I need. And prying his guard open is the next step. You'll see I'm stepping over and using my insteps to make sure he can't lock down the half guard, then I come back over the top so I can take mount, and again, my head's already in a strong spot for a head and arm choke. But the difference with being a purple belt is this attack is way too obvious. I have to bail and set something else up, even though I'm low on time. I switch off into S mount, trap his wrist with my leg so I can wrap up a Kimura, then when it's starting to look good, I unfortunately run out of time. For the final competitor, I'm going up against Luke, a brown belt. He's a very active competitor who even went up against Ethan from the B team that couldn't put him away, so let's see if I can. I'll admit that he has a quick advantage because he's rocking a power mullet while I desperately need a haircut. But if there's one thing this ugly mob can do, it's to grab an underhook, and once I get there, scoring becomes a lot easier. I shuck him by with the underhook to get to his back, and he takes it upon himself to go into a quad pod. Not wanting to get into any footlock entanglements, I bring him back to the wrestling days of running a half Nelson on him. By doing this, even if he turns to his back like he wanted to attack my feet, I'm still going to have a dominant position where I can shove him into side control or north-south. Which is exactly how the role plays out. He's trying to scoop my leg, and I can't have this happen, so I run the half Nelson even harder, forcing him to let me pass his guard, but he's going to throw in a buggy choke. And if you want to know my secret defense to this, it's absolutely nothing. The only one key detail I have is to shove your forearm into their throat while keeping your elbow low. This choke only works if he pulls me in, so with my arm over his throat, the more he pulls me, the more he chokes himself. Personally, I feel pretty comfortable here, but I can't say the same thing for Luke. Just make sure they don't pass your elbow by and you're good to go, and then you can start to lift them once you get bored of being the position, then you can get back to some manly passing. We can see here that Brown Belt definitely comes a lot closer. He's doing a nice job keeping me at distance. And pretty much any time I'm with a Brown Belt or higher, I'm always worried about a footlock entanglement. I keep my left instep in, so even if he scoops under my leg, it's gonna be impossible to pull that thing out. Then I start to settle my weight, establish body lock, and pass right into another buggy choke, but with this time, shoving my nuts on his head. Which again shows it is the most valuable position you can have in Jiu Jitsu as he's forced to scramble his way out and I start taking his back. Now Mole Man is not a fan of being here. So he rolls over and gives me mount, and I only have one more task to do. But that's going to be difficult because he's shoving me away and he gets his arm trapped in between my bicep. I was really wrenching onto this head and arm choke and I thought I had everything locked in, but I didn't know he managed to get his hand in there as I was locking this up. I could hear him wheezing, but it wasn't until watching the replay that I see what the real issue was. That hand was giving him just enough space and he was kicking his legs up, making it tough for me to keep this head and arm choke. And sure, I was able to transition out of there and right back into mount, but either way, I was just having a tough time finishing this dude. I tried again for the head and arm choke, but the truth is, my arms were just too gassed at this point after all the rounds to finish it. And we continue to have a great round of scrambling back and forth with me passing and getting better positions, but the truth is, everybody says that belts don't matter because it's just a novelty item. It's a great source of personal achievement, but it's not about the color fabric you wear, but the hours on the mat. And one day, I have a dream that everybody can be doing jiu-jitsu without worrying about their belt color, and everyone is entitled to a free guillotine.